Hey everybody and welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for the market recap. And if you're interested in any of the services I provide, please check out the links in the description below for both the Patreon and Discord. Okay guys, so we're gonna hop right into the charts, but quick, quick piece of news. We obviously all know what's going on regarding the banks. <clears throat> it's been quite a hectic day and really a hectic weekend. But as you know, many small to mid-tier banks in the US have been failing. And as we can tell so far, it seems to be fairly under control. Now, this doesn't mean it's gonna stay under control, but it does mean that as of right now, everything seems to be under control in regards to the Fed, the FDIC, and all the depositors in those banks. So I do think that we are gonna to continue to see volatility. We are gonna to continue to see issues with the banks going forward, but I do think the descent into that, uh, into that future will be slower since we have seen a backstop from the Fed. Now, things will continue to escalate if it starts to show that the larger tier one banks, namely JPM, Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo, etc. If those sized banks start to fail, then we can see something that's similar to potentially even like, oh wait, okay? So my advice is stay calm, <clears throat> stay vigilant, make sure you're nimble, and always, always, always trust the charts. The charts will show you the way. Okay, so getting off of that news, let's talk about the market. So looking at the dollar, dollar having continuation to the downside today and pretty much as expected, right? So we have been watching for the dollar to come up and I was looking for it to come into this monthly bearish fair value gap. We just got towards the bottom end of that, made it a nice bear doji as we can see right there. And then from there, we had a nice pullback, likely coming into this daily bullish fair value gap and really retesting this uptrend line that we've been on for quite some time. So as we see price come into this level, I would say watch for this to bounce here and then show weakness as we grind up to potentially then show more downside. Now, this may change depending on what the Fed will say later this month. A lot of stuff has changed over the weekend in regards to how aggressive the Fed may or may not be. In my opinion, the Fed may still raise rates this month, um, but they will be more wary on how aggressive they go about it. When banks are slow, showing major signs of weakness, raising rates can lead to something far, far worse than raging inflation. So prepare yourself for a Fed pivot if it gets even worse as we come into the next FOMC. You may even hear them start bringing back the word easing. Okay, so dollar, I'm still seeing some, some downside and then we're gonna be looking for sh some short-term upside as we come into around like 102, 1025, and then we'll see what happens from there. Next is the Dow. <clears throat> so looking at the Dow, Dow pretty much played out perfectly. I mean, it's been, it's been absolutely perfect with the Dow. I, I, I can't say I'm upset with it at all. Came after the drop from the triangle, breaking that triangle bearish, came back up, tested that triangle structure and the bearish fair value gap, and then failed off of that, rolled right on down, had a nice strong plunge going into these lower bullish fair value gaps. And honestly, that's what you want to see. You want to see price come into these levels hard because it heightens the probabilities that you're going to get a nice rebound from there. So we had a nice wick into that level that really came close to this breakout trend line here. Okay, so we're, we're, we've tested this general zone. Now, are we going to get the follow through? Well, looking at the dollar, looking at potentially what's going on on the fundamental level, we actually may see that pull back to the upside over the course of this week. So look for a pullback back towards 32,441 and potentially even higher going towards 32.6. And then we'll see what the price action looks from there. Level to level guys, level to level. Next is S&P. Let's take a quick look of how the S&P has been looking. So similar story with the S&P, didn't come into a uh, fair value gaps, but it did come into the breakout, uh, the breakout line here. So it broke this descending trend line that it made from the all time high finally broke bullish and now we've come back retraced to it and now we're continuing to trade on top of it now if we have that roll up like we are s seeing for the dow look for the same thing in the sp coming back towards 3900 and then potentially even back towards 4000 if we get an extended leg up so short term i'm look it's looking bullish guys and this is what we've been waiting to see right 
we want to see those higher low structures starting to form if we're going to have continued upside so we've hit our first step we made those higher highs from the lower highs we've made a couple of higher lows now we want to see a continuation from that from this ultimate lower low down lower uh low level down here okay so we are we are getting the puzzle pieces to give us a clearer picture slowly but surely so we'll keep our eye on this short term look for a move back towards 3900 next is nasdaq so nasdaq continuously trading kind of grinding down didn't get all the way down towards this bullish fair value gap or towards this uh major pivot level here but got fairly close just missed it but as always you know the nasdaq's always going to over exceed uh you know the levels that you're looking for to get to or even just front run uh, support zones you're trying to get to that's just the nature of the nasdaq with the tech and everything the growth stock so this is not surprising now if we do have that upside move look for a move that's going to challenge these highs again the nasdaq always likes to challenge the highs it makes especially in the short term so look for a move back to 12.5 and then once we get to there we'll see we'll have to see how the down s p are trading but you may even get another move back near Nearing like 12.6 to 12.8, challenging these highs as well. Okay, so now let's get to the oil chart, see what's going on with oil. So I redid this, of course. Uh, I had a similar structure before, but I did it with like the little doodles here. So this is a little cleaner, hopefully. So you're seeing what I've been talking about. We're in this triangle structure, slowly squeezing out. It's been clearly respecting this. Now we had a nice dump today off of dollar weakness and obviously off of the bank showing weakness. So <clears throat> we may get some continuation lower. Uh, or we may continue to tighten in here. Nothing has changed and we must remain neutral within this structure. However, the overall bias, at least in my opinion, when you look at the larger structure of oil, has to be bullish. Now, we have to stay bullish even if we drop all the way down to 60 because if we go up to like the weekly and monthly timeframes, that level is still just a bullish pullback from the massive, massive, massive move up from pretty much when the futures went haywire and then all the way back from pretty much when we were at 40 bucks so nothing has really changed uh so we have to just continue to stay vigilant of this chart but i can't not be bullish until i see a change in the monthly structure and that, that's not coming anytime soon guys unfortunately next is gold and silver so man what a day what a day on gold and silver now these blue lines are actually from a uh, live stream i did on the discord i do them often so if you're not in the discord make sure to join in we did a live stream that lasted since 10 a.m eastern time all the way until like 5 p.m so like an hour ago so it, it went on for a long time we had a great time got to talk to a bunch of people and this is actually one of the uh, uh trade structures that one of my members are in who's currently in the day trading service with me trying to become a funded trader he's well on his way and i'm happy to announce you know uh that one of our traders today actually became funded with ftmo so congratulations to them uh if you are in the discord make sure to send your love to enric uh, i'm very proud of him happy that he was able to get it done if you haven't joined the discord make sure to join we have a ton of free trades ton of live streams and if you do want to become a member of any of my services you can find all the details on the on the discord there and maybe even become a funded trader if that is what you desire so so far gold has been playing out absolutely fabulously it actually has filled out this entire bearish rate value gap so we can get rid of that and now we're seeing it potentially show some continuation signs it's very early on these two these last three candles have been exactly like extremely powerful now what tends to happen after three very powerful candles you will get somewhat of a slowdown now doesn't mean it has to be permanent you may get a slowdown on the lower time frames like the four hour and one hour we get a, a decent pullback and then by the end of the day in this case it'll be tomorrow you'll see that daily candle have a nice little wick down and then closing above up to, to here potentially okay so it doesn't mean that you're going to have an actual reversal down here but you do tend to get a slowdown after such a massive move so we'll keep our eye on that for now but overall right now looking at looking at gold massive pop from this major level I had been highlighting, which is about 1800, 1810. And we came into the bearish fair value gap, filled it. And now we're starting to threaten the other upside fair value gap up here. The bearish one at 19, pretty much 1920, going to 1950 ish, 1945. Okay, so this would be the next major level we would want to see oil get to if we're going to have continuation. Once we're here, I would look for a slowdown. It's going to be very difficult, at least in my opinion, to start taking out these highs um, unless the dollar heavily weakens very very fast but other than that i am looking for a pullback 
probably between here where we're at now, potentially going all the way back down to like 1890. And then that's where we could potentially see a little bit of a slowdown from the selling and then continuation back up on the lower time frames like the four hour and the one hour. So let's actually pop this on the chart real quick so we can actually come back to this on the next recap. So I'm looking forward to get to around 1890 and then probably slow down there. So on the four hour, we're looking forward to kind of retrace the top move it's made here back towards this level at 1890 and then look for continuation potentially higher if the dollar is going to weaken out further. All right, so next is silver. So let's take a quick look at silver. Silver had a wonderful day today, just like gold came into this bullish fair value gap, came and held this ascending trend line very decisively, very clearly. And now it's come into pretty much uh, the top side of this pivot here, showing some weakness here, just like gold is. So again, look for a potential pullback, probably coming back towards 2127. So we'll also pop a trend line there and then we'll reference back to see how this may pull back if it does, okay? So again, here's another sign. Four hour is showing signs of slowing down. You can see the momentum in the candle slowing down. If you want more details on that, make sure to check out my tutoring service. I go over that quite heavily and we're gonna probably see a bit of a pullback here. Now we do see a potential bullish consolidation here, but it's quite young. It's very, very immature. So it's unlikely to break up immediately. So I would be looking for that pullback anyway on the four hour and, they, uh, and the daily. And then once we're there, look for slowdown of the selling and potentially continuation to the upside. Okay, let's take a look at Bitcoin. I've been wanting to look at this chart for some time since I started the video, really. All right, Bitcoin. Wow. <laughs> what a move on Bitcoin, right? So if you are in the Lemon Garden uh, and you are in the Swing Trade Service, you know we opened up long down towards this low pivot here. Um, it was a great, great decision, obviously. Now, it has performed well above my expectations for the Swing Trade. I was looking for this to be a larger consolidation within this zone. Okay, I wasn't looking for it to immediately just reverse up. But this is why you want to buy liquidity levels because stuff like this can happen and you can find yourself really buying the turn right so this was an incredible incredible long on our end and we're still in it as of now just going to continues continue to watch it as it's trading in one of my key zones and then we'll see if we're going to show any continuation again very very strong move now i would be looking for a pullback on this um as we have filled out this bearish fair value gap we are trading in this pretty significant zone and we really didn't build out a base here for a higher low from these lows so it's been very very you know unhealthy to be to be honest it's very unhealthy this price action so it having a lot of life in it is very unlikely it's very similar to what we experienced over here right so we had this really epic move up small cons cons uh, consolidation here pull up again larger consolidation breakdown very very small consolidation to then try and have continuation to the upside and then we failed so here, same thing, nice pullback, uh, very little, I mean, literally just the day, just trading down here and then immediately starts shooting up from there. Came in and tapped this descending trend line, which is a pretty significant trend line as it is the all time high to point B. So all time high to the lower high, uh, breaking out and coming back to that trend line and holding it and then bursting from it. That, that's a very strong structure, you know, don't get me wrong, but you ideally want to see more maturation down here to really confirm a higher low structure from this level down here. OK, so it isn't ideal how this played out, but, you know, we can't be we can't complain as we are long. You know, it's great that you don't have any drawdown. It's great that the move goes right in your direction, but you do want to see healthier structures for more prolonged upside. Now, what happens if we do have prolonged upside? What can we be looking at here? Well, in my opinion, the weekly will show us the way. OK, so the weekly will show us the way. Obviously, we had a massive buy up over the weekend as USDC, the peg came back together. So quick mention on that, the USDC peg is you know back. Looks like it's solid as ever right now. USD tethers peg is coming back as you saw that overshot quite a bit. But now everything seems to be settling down in the stable markets, especially now that the, the banking stuff is seems like it's under control, at least for now. So we are seeing some upside here, almost like a corrective move to the upside. Now, if we were to, let's say, 
finish the week off like this. So let's say we actually went sideways for the next six days, which is very unlikely, then this will imply that we do have a move back up going towards the 28,000s and potentially even higher. Now, what's more likely to happen is that we actually do have either major continuation tomorrow, or we're gonna have over the rest of this week, a pullback down, potentially back towards the 22s, 23 maybe even 21 8 something like that and then we'll see if we can have bullish continuation going into next week okay so we we do want to see how uh sustainable this is and we're going to get our answer in my opinion probably tomorrow uh it's very likely in my opinion that we do pull back but if we can get a pullback that's showing a bullish consolidation of some sort, something like this, then I'll be really, really confident that we're looking at a move to try and take out these highs here at 25.2 and going towards that 27, that 28, and potentially even the 30s. But once we're in those, those zones, right? So if you've been following me over a couple of months here, I've been warning 28 to 38 are my major zones of failure because I'm still of the opinion that we are in a bear market rally so nothing's really changed with that in my opinion uh but of course i could be wrong but if we are in a bear market rally this is the prime zone of failure because we're making a high a lower high on the macro after this downtrend okay so then you, you look to make a new downtrend now i go into more detail of this in the tutoring sessions but there are ways to read how potential trends are going to continue to mature again the more parabolic it is the younger it is the less lifespan it has and the more stable it is the longer it lasts and essentially you can start to measure that out in the charts once you get used to market structure okay so i am looking for potentially more upside uh if we do have a strong week tomorrow will give me the answer i believe so i will be a little bit more decisive in my wording tomorrow and tomorrow's recap now if we go to the monthly real quick just want to touch on the monthly so if you know um i had i had been long bitcoin back at eighteen thousand three hundred and seventy five. we ended up closing that off of this monthly candle here this doji uh, I had warned that if it didn't take last month's high, which was January at the time, um, if it didn't close above that high, I was going to close the long. And I did. And I don't regret it. Even though we have this beautiful move to uh, this month, I don't regret it because it was the right decision at the time. Okay. Now, what can happen here is that we do come back to the highs of this month. And if we do start taking that out, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we're immediately going to break up. Because what happens after you have dojis, you will sometimes get wicks above them but it doesn't change the fact that you start to sell down prior to the, the candles close. So I'm going to be very patient with this monthly candle. So with March's monthly candle as Bitcoin trades, and thankfully we have a long. So if we do start breaking up further higher, I can, you know, consistently just watch it, monitor our trade. And if I start thinking about closing my trade, that means it's very likely that my eyes are telling me that we're looking at Bitcoin to pull back further. Okay. Now Bitcoin has wicked very low. It wicked about 50% of this upside of this uh, bullish engulfing candle, which I said was pretty much ideal. You want to see Bitcoin coming back 50% of this candle and then holding that never, never taking out the key monthly level, which is the high of December and, uh, and then turning around and going bullish. Now I wasn't expecting that all to happen within one month and also definitely not within one day. Okay, so we are moving way faster than expected. But if we do have continued upside to so everyone in the Lemon Garden, especially who's in the swing trades with me in the Bitcoin trades and the altcoin trades, um, enjoy the ride. Okay, I will do my best that we can get as much out of the trades as we possibly can. As you can see, we're long all this stuff. We're in the money with just about all of it or fairly break even. If we have continuation going into tomorrow, we will enjoy the ride i will slowly try and scale out of these longs and then we'll look for over extensions to start getting in short for some of these these trades okay so remember always always remember when we are long retail is often not and when we're short retail is often long the way i trade is we slowly cycle away from the majority we never quickly cycle it's slow we slowly scale out of longs, slowly scale into shorts, slowly scale out of shorts, slowly scale into longs. We're the people that will be selling the retail, the, uh, the majority of traders, the orders to get in 
and get out. We're that we're that crew. Okay, so we're gonna keep that going. This is why we haven't lost a trade <laughs> since April and May of last year. So we're gonna keep this going. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching the recap. Again, if you have any questions, make sure to join the Discord. You'll find the link in the description below. It's totally free Discord, uh, total, totally free, and you can meet a ton of good people. And I have a ton of free stuff for anyone who's a free member. Again, I do free trades as well, free stock trades, free crypto trades. Um, and I do live streams that everyone, whether you're a premium member or a free member, you can hop on in, talk, hang out, ask me questions, all that stuff. If you want to be a premium member, obviously join the Discord. You'll find all the info there. I have a swing trade service that, as, like I just said, is extremely successful so far. I have a day trading room that I, I'm super proud of uh, and so far has been quite good. We even got someone funded today. That's incredible. And then I also have a tutoring service. If you want to learn how I trade or you want to better your set, your strategy, your system, I believe I'm your guy. Okay. And always remember, be patient, be vigilant, and be nimble. I love you guys. Take care. Bye.